such. We are all conscious in this Parliament, or we should be, of how the job of First Lord of the Treasury evolved in Britain, steadily developing a grip over other cabinet departments previously independent of it, and developing into the post of Prime Minister. The creation of that job took many years. And the Prime Minister probably feels that it took almost as long to get round to his turn to hold it. <laughs> but to see how the post, to see how the post of a permanent president of the European Council could also evolve is not difficult even for the humblest student of politics. And it is, of course, rumoured that one Tony Blair may now be interested in the job. Now, if that makes us uncomfortable on these benches, just imagine how it is viewed in Downing Street. <laughs> and I... I must warn ministers opposite that having tangled with Tony Blair across this dispatch box on literally hundreds of occasions, I know his mind almost as well as they do. I can tell them that when he goes off to a major political conference of a centre-right party and simultaneously refers to himself as a socialist, he is on manoeuvres. And he is... He is busily... He is busily building coalitions as only he can. And we can all picture the scene at a European Council sometime next year. Picture the face of our poor Prime Minister as the name of Blair is placed in nomination by one President and Prime Minister after another. The look of utter gloom on his face. <laughs> The nauseating, glutinous praise oozing from every head of government. The rapid revelation of a majority view agreed behind closed doors when he was, as usual, excluded. Never would he regret more no longer being in possession of a veto. The famous... The famous drop jaw almost hitting the table as he realises there is no option but to join in. And then the awful moment when the motorcade of the President of Europe sweeps into Downing Street. The gritted teeth and bitten nails. The Prime Minister emerging from his door with a smile of intolerable anguish. The, the choking sensation as the words Mr President are forced out of his mouth. And then... Then, once in the cabinet room, the melodrama of when will you hand over to me all over again. <laughs> there is, of course, a serious point here, Madam Deputy Speaker. <laughs> Occupied by someone with the political skill of our former Prime Minister, this job would become, in not so many years, a far more substantial one than the government now pretend. Seen as the President of Europe by the rest of the world, with, a, with the role of national government steadily reduced and the role of national democracy and accountability steadily weakened, the naivety of ministers who think that by signing this treaty they are agreeing to a static constitutional position would be alarming were it not apparent in people with such senior responsibilities.